This is the online service that is brought to you with love and prayers from us all here at the Benefice of Rural East York. Thank you for joining with us to worship the Lord our God and we hope that this time that we share together will bless you richly. And so as we prepare to worship, a few verses from Psalm 34. Glorify the Lord with me. Exalt his name, for great is he. I'll praise the Lord for ever and ever. My soul shall boast of his wonderful name. I sought the Lord. He answered my calling and delivered me from my inmost fears. O oh, taste and see how gracious the Lord is. Secure are they who take refuge in him. The, the Lord redeems the faithful who serve him, and those who trust him he never condemns. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Amen. The reading is taken from the book of Luke, chapter 9, verses 51 to 62. 
As the time approached for him to be taken up to heaven, Jesus resolutely set out for Jerusalem, and he sent messengers on ahead who went into a Samaritan village to get things ready for him. But the people there did not welcome him, because he was headed for Jerusalem. When the disciples James and John saw this, they asked, Lord, do you want us to call fire down from heaven to destroy them? But Jesus turned and rebuked them. Then he and his disciples went to another village. As they were walking along the road, a man said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus replied, Foxes have dens and birds have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. He said to another man, Follow me. But he replied, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. Jesus said to him, Let the dead bury their own dead, but you go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Still another said, I will follow you, Lord, but first let me go back and say goodbye to my family. Jesus replied, No one who puts a hand to the plough and looks back is fit for service in the kingdom of God. May my spoken words be faithful to the written word and lead us all to the living word. Amen. I once received a national survey from the Consumer Research Bureau and the incentive to complete it and return it was to win a sizeable cash prize. I didn't win. But the survey, it was massive with hundreds of questions covering things like my house, my car, any investments, the newspaper I read, where I shop, which shampoo and deodorant I use and which fabric conditioner is shoved in the washing machine. Question 45 asked what I feed the dog. Section 9, subsection 3 asked if I was saving for a Christmas hamper. And question 53 asked how many bottles of wine I buy a year. But what really fascinated me in this survey, and this is the reason I'm sharing it with you, is the section that was titled Leisure Pursuits. There was a list of 66 sports and activities that we might enjoy in our spare time, such as snowboarding, betting, hair and beauty, and something ominously listed as men's interests, whatever they are. And nestling between railways and retirement was religious activities. This is what the world perceives people of faith to be up to. Faith is seen as a leisure pursuit, something we do in our spare time, a hobby. How on earth has religious activities, faith, found its way into leisure pursuits? Following Jesus is not and never has been a leisure activity. It's not in any way a part-time pursuit. It's a full-time faith. Following Jesus isn't something we just fit into our busy diaries when there's a space. Not something we only do on a Sunday. At least it shouldn't be. As Luke intends in this reading, we've heard following Jesus requires a radical reorientation of ourselves towards Jesus. Following Jesus isn't all about having it all. Rather, it is about leaving it all behind. Jesus, we hear, had his face set on Jerusalem and so sets the example of obedience for us. Following Jesus calls us to fix our eyes on him, to trust him, to lead us forward in selfless love and service. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, 
that then bears fruit in all its richness for God's kingdom. To take up our cross and follow him in every moment of every day. And why? Why do we do this? Because this is the only response possible when the breadth and depth of God's unconditional love has touched our heart and our soul. Ours is a full time faith. Are you living it? Amen. Let us pray to the Lord, whose compassion never fails and whose mercy is ever new. In these anxious and troubled times in our land, reassure our citizens, whatever their origins, of your mighty power, and that, as events unfold, you continue to work your plan for mankind. In zones of conflict and confrontation, Gift your wisdom to leaders and to negotiators. In matters of health, may the well-being of the weakest be the concern of all. We pray for York Diocesan Office, Diocesan Secretary and Chief Executive Canon Peter Worry. We pray for our spiritual leaders, Archbishop Stephen, Bishop John, Archdeacons John and Sam, and for Area Dean Jackie, recovering from surgery. We ask your special care for the York Methodist Circuit. 
made the vision statement growing in Christ continue to energize Christians here and beyond. May it build on aspirations to worship, learn and care, to serve and witness to faith in our communities. And we ask you to uphold the province of the Episcopal Church of Sudan. Bless, we pray, families in our parishes and in our benefice this week, particularly the family of Daniel, baptismal candidate. Have mercy on the sick and on the medical and nursing professionals. Bless all who are engaged in the work of healing. We pray for all who have recently died. May they rise again at your word. We pray too for all who are near death. May they pass easily to new life. Unworthy of the presence of Christ, we offer our prayers through him, trusting in his love. Merciful Father, Accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you for joining in with us today, wherever you have been tuning in from. It's a privilege to share with you in this way, and we just pray that the week ahead will be for you joyful and peaceful and that you will know the presence of God walking beside you each and every day. And so to our blessing. May the Father who so loved the world that he gave his only Son bring you by faith to his eternal life. May Christ, who accepted the cup of sacrifice in obedience to the Father's will, keep you steadfast as you walk with him the way of the cross. And may the Spirit who strengthens us to suffer with Christ, that we may share his glory, set our minds on life and peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.